there are a lot of men out here who want to get married. They want to be in a relationship so that they can avoid the game, right? They Like, I'm tired of these games. I just want to get married. You know, the truth is this. If you play in games, that's because of you. It ain't really because of these women. You have to have game, not play game. There's a difference. If you can't get a consistent type of treatment, submission and things of the like, while you're single, then don't expect that that shit's just automatically going to happen because you put a ring on a woman's finger. Don't think it's going to automatically happen because you're legally obligated to be monogamous to a woman or else. You would think that being married or being in a, in a, a committed relationship is something that would give a woman an added incentive to want to treat you well. And there may be a little bit of truth to that. It may be an added incentive to want to stick around. But think about it like this. If she gains something by leaving you, then that's an added incentive to leave as well as an added incentive to stay. Right? It takes more game to be a married man and to have a happy relationship in life than it does to be a single man who's just running amok. And there's nothing wrong with either one of them. As a man, you have a choice about how you want to live your life, the lifestyle you want to leave, like, you know, how you want to move. That's your choice. That's your prerogative. But as much as that's your prerogative, you got to understand, man, what you got to understand is this. A piece of paper ain't automatically going to make a woman want to be feminine and submissive with you. Now, if she could tell you a good dude or you're a real nigga, you know, she might be a little bit more uh, inclined towards taking the steps to learn how to cooperate and cohabitate with you. You know what I mean? To coexist. But that doesn't automatically mean that you're going to have submission. Because check this out. You know, when it comes to certain things like validation, there's social validation, emotional validation, financial compensation. Those are things that when you're working to get it, and this isn't even for an extended period of time like that, when you're working to get it, you have an added boost of, an added boost of motivation. When you're getting it, you may have an added boost of motivation. And after you've had it for a little while, after an extended period of time goes by, that becomes the regular setting of your life. And once that becomes the regular setting of your life, all that, I do this because we're married, all this stuff, that goes out the window, bro. Now, all the benefits that come with marriage are going to be something that if she already doesn't respect you as a man, she's going to feel entitled to. And she may not feel like she has to do anything else outside of what she was already doing to show you that she is the woman who you should be with. Right? When you're single, she can't leverage pussy over your head. Right, she can if you really ain't got no options and you allow it. But when you're married and the clause of your relationship is that if you cheat, she has the right to divorce you and you're at fault, then if she don't respect you as a man and don't sexually desire you, she can leverage sex over your head. There's a reason why I say it's important to have certain things in place. You know, there's gonna be times where you get into like there's gonna be times where where you're dealing with a woman you integrate then there's gonna be times where she might take charge of a situation take control of it cool right because she may have more skill in that area more knowledge in that area there's nothing wrong with that there's gonna be times where she's gonna be logical about certain situations that's cool right there's gonna be times and i hope there's times where she's giving you a high level of pleasure right and you get to sit back and be sexually submissive in that moment. And letting her feel sexy and desirable 
and powerful sexually, right? These are things that should occur within a good relationship. But primary roles, primary positions, those are things that you start establishing up front from the dribble. Off top, you establish those things. Right? This is something to understand. You know, a lot of the times, people like to make the foundation of their relationship. Yes, the foundation of your relationship shouldn't be just sex. Unless that's something that y'all both want to do. You're like, all right, cool. I ain't mad at you, but... It should be other things. But when the foundation of your relationship, how you interact with that woman has nothing to do with anything that makes her want to fuck you. You might be in a bad spot. Like that friends first. Like, oh, yeah, I'm with her. Me and her were best friends. All right, cool. If she's sexually attracted to you, I can almost guarantee you that the friendship aspect itself is not what sexually attracts her to. you. You're sexy to her. You do things that are masculine. You do things that are dominant. You turn her on. You make her feel sexy. Right? Just some things to understand. But if you aren't capable of getting that type of treatment while you're single, don't expect for that to mag- magically change because you're in a relationship now. And sometimes a woman will say stuff like that. Like, oh, well, I'll do this when we're married. This shit ain't a light switch. Submission ain't like some flip that's just switched because of a title. That's social validation. It's the same exact relationship that you had. Now, like, let's say even the treatment that you get when you're single. And I'm single. I don't cohabitate. I plan to down the line, but I'm not doing that right now. Right. So, like, let's say a woman just sees you once, you know, once a month, once every couple of weeks. That's not consistent enough. To know how that's going to be when you actually live with somebody on a daily basis. It's easy, or at least easier, to establish certain masculine traits and dominant traits and to tap into that persona, that mindset, in a, in a finite period of time. And then you can go home and be, you know, a weak nigga. Or it's just a role play thing, you know, when it's only role play. But... I believe it's important to establish these particular things within your dynamic, within the dynamic of the relationship itself. Certain things will be a little automatic, but it's not going to be 100 percent automatic all the time. You have to search certain things in motion. You have to get the ball rolling as a man. And thinking that just being married is automatically going to get you the treatment that you want from a woman. That is a bad mindset to have. Because by the time you realize it's not the case, it's going to be a little too late for you. And now you locked in. Now it's cheaper to keep her. Get what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't let a woman tell me like, oh, well, I do this if we're in a relationship. Or I'll do this if we're married. You know, many times I heard women say, oh, I don't like to do this unless I'm in a relationship. Then they did the same thing that day or the next day they seen me or some shit like that. Or it just took a couple of weeks and they was doing exactly what they said they would need more to do. It, it don't work like that. Like their submission isn't a light switch that gets flipped because of a, a, a relationship status or a relationship uh, title. And even if it does... That's something that only works for a finite period of time. Then after a while, that woman's going to revert back to her natural way and how she desires to interact with you. The things that she does because of that title are going to be things that she can't maintain over a long period of time. It's just like if you're getting paid at a job, right? Maybe you first got the job. So you're working real hard. But you keep working hard when you want advancement. When you're happy where you are, where you're complacent, then you kind of just get into the flow of the motions. And I'm sure you don't want that just going through the motions type of shit going on. That's just something to understand. That's why I believe it's important to have a certain dynamic that is established within your relationship. Like intrinsic sexual desire from the woman, right? Dom sub dynamics in place, masculine feminine dynamics in place. 
That's not 100% of the relationship. But that's just primary roles. Primary roles that you set into. You have to know how you're going to deal with conflict. Like just establishing certain things. And some of these things aren't just things that you say to a woman. It's things that you show. If a woman knows that she doesn't have to nag at you. Because you're going to do what you say. And what you say you're not going to do, you're not going to do. That is either she get with it or she don't. And then certain things are a matter of negotiation. Certain things are a matter of having a conversation. But there should be some key things that you're not doing that with. That's masculinity. That's having your approach. That's knowing who you are as a man. Right? Because there's a lot of things that men complain about when it comes to women that if their game was tight, they wouldn't deal with that whether they single or, or they married. And it's just certain conversations that I've had, certain people that I've met, you know, where you realize that certain things that men complain about when it comes to women are their own fault. If you hold yourself accountable, a woman doesn't have to. Like, if you're giving a woman the promise of monogamy, but you're constantly cheating on her, you're going to drain that woman dry. She's going to be hurt. And, you know, and that's going to push her into the state of masculine energy or feminine dominance, right? Because if you can't control your desires, your emotions, the things that you want to do, and you can't control that in a way where you're honest about who you are as a person, who you are as a man, and you find a way to integrate the lifestyle that you want to live into the lifestyle that you are living, then when you try to paint a picture of who you are or what you want to be to a woman, and you aren't taking active steps towards that, then that woman might be holding you accountable. She either she thinks you lack direction, so she wants to give you direction, or she has to hold you accountable to what your own goals and your own direction is. And honestly, that's a good thing, you know? It's a good thing if a woman helps hold you accountable to what your goals, your aspirations are, but you should have intrinsic motivation to meet the goals that you want to reach in life. But you got to understand that part of the reason why I talk about the biology first approach, part of the reason why I talk about establishing certain things in the dynamic, and I don't even say these things always in the context of of being in a long-term relationship, is because how that woman treats you, how she feels about you when there's no relationship, or without the social validation, a whole bunch of emotional validation, oftentimes that's what she really wants to do, that's how she really desires you. And then you'll falsely allow a woman to believe, or you'll allow yourself to believe and allow a woman to tell you that if you do this, then she'll do this. This masculine submissive, you're having this transactional type of relationship. And when it comes to transactions, especially in the realm of sex, what you gotta understand is that transactional sex is not meant to be a long-term thing. Right? It's not meant to be a long-term thing. Like I say, if you're a dude who's who's bent on, on having transactional sex, let that be short-term engagements. Right? Short-term. Because after a while, you get tired of giving up control for survival after a while you work your way up the ladder to where you think that she's giving up control for survival but really she's learning all of the ins and outs of you and then she might climb up from the masculine submissive to the masculine dominant right or all the tricks and shit like that that you have to do to get her into the feminine submissive from the masculine submissive Are things that will eventually erode at her and hurt her to the point where she's going to shut down or she's just going to walk away. After a while, you have to like and and I call it it kind of works like money laundering. Like if you take that feminine dominant route to to attract a woman, like if you lie, you play those games or whatever it is, you know, you try to mostly validate her a whole bunch up front. And to create this exciting experience, whatever you do to get a woman, you got to keep do it to keep her. But if what you do to get a woman is to hurt her, that means you got to keep hurting her. And it might work for a little while, but eventually a woman going to get tired of that. Who are you as a man? 
Very important to understand this question. Very important to understand. There are a lot of men who seek marriage because they don't have game. But it takes more game to be able to sustain a relationship with a woman over an extended period of time than it does to run the streets. So I suggest that you spend your time when you're single to develop your skills. Develop your leadership skills. Develop your masculinity. Develop knowing who you are as a man, what you can deal with, what you can't deal with. And not just knowing what you can and can't deal with from a perspective of saying, well, these are my deal breakers and all this other stuff. That's cool and all. But you got to understand, there's going to be a lot of women that you probably come across who would have a capacity to pick up what you're putting down if you know how to put it down right. So know how to make yourself attractive for the outcome that you desire. If you want to be masculine, develop your program. Work on it, tweak it. You know what outcome that you desire? You know how to make yourself attractive for it. It's like just getting frustrated because a woman's not having an orgasm. But you don't know how to arouse her. You don't know her spots. You don't know her body. You're just wishing that it would happen while you're taking a passive role. Right? That don't work. Because over time, you're going to set into that pattern. Over time, you're going to get set in your ways. It's like wanting a woman to follow your lead when you don't know how to lead. That shit don't work. You have to develop that. And it's not that you have it or you don't have it. These are things that have to be developed. Right? You don't want to be in... You don't want to desire to be in control from a place of just your ego. You want to have a plan and a vision and to truly believe in and see your vision and have a woman who desires you first and foremost, but then she also sees your vision and wants to go along with that vision. And if she sees your vision for us, and let's say if, if what I want for us is more fleshed out and benefits both of us, me and her, more than what she wants for her, what she thinks will benefit her, then eventually that what that woman will see is, you know what? I want to follow this man's plan because he's put more thought into it. I don't have the capacity to sit down and think about all these different things. And I don't even know if I can get that man. And even if I got that man, I don't think I don't even know if I'd really be happy with the man who fits all these things I have in my mind about what I want, because she has to think about and a lot of women don't. Are you attracted for the outcome that you desire? Would you actually like if you got what you wanted? A lot of people don't put thought into that. A lot of women don't put thought into that. So when your vision, your plan, your program it includes her needs, right? It includes the lifestyle you want to live. It includes the intricacies and the, the nuances of the dynamic that you want to operate within with that woman. And she can see that plan, that program and say, you know what? I like this plan, this program better than the one that social programming gave me or better than the one I thought I wanted for myself. I want to I want to pick up what he's putting down because I see this is going to benefit me. This is going to benefit us. This is going to benefit him. He's going to be happy. And then him being happy, he's going to make sure that I'm happy too. And she got to be happy within herself. Over time, she get integrated into that. Your vision become y'all vision. And then even if you lack and even if you slack and she can see where you're coming from and say, all right, no, nah, baby, I remember you said this is what we try to do. We got to keep our eyes on the prize. See, that's a teammate. There's someone who's down for the cause. But you have to have a cause for a woman to be down for the cause. You don't want to be no just a rebel without a cause.
you have to know what it is you're trying to do. And if that's a woman who's made it through your process to the point where you feel like you can build something with her, you're listening to her. You're seeing where she's trying to go with life. You see what she she likes about the relationship dynamic. She's picking up what you're putting down. She's submissive with you. She's feminine with you. You give a little power here and there. You see what she does with it. You teach her the things that you like. Anything that you like, you got to learn how to teach it to her. If she don't already know. And in front of that place, that's who you build with. I say take that time being single to develop your program, to develop your mindset, to develop your leadership skills, to develop your sex game, to develop certain discipline habits. Right? Don't waste your time in the game just fucking off and just tricking off and then think that a marriage is automatically going to be a different type of scenario. That's why I talk about the biology first approach. This approach right here has the things in mind that's going to come with the long-term situation that I want to be in. You know, I talk about what I like and I also talk about just the dynamics of things in general, but I talk about what I like. If you like similar things, then just keep those things in mind and you tailor your program, you tailor your mindset to that. But after a while, if that's set up in mind, it's just like smaller steps. It's building smaller muscle groups. Now I got the time to do it. God willing, because I'm only 26. If you get that shit right, then you're good. Coach Brody, I'm out.